Hello, everyone. It's nice to see everybody here today. Thank you again for taking the time to come out. Um, so my session is going to be about pathways to purpose. So basically, I'm going to be sharing life lessons through my eyes, and hopefully, you'll take something away that could work for you in finding your own pathways to purpose. Um, so first of all, imagine a classroom, but no chairs, no tables, nothing like that. Just you and light in whichever way you trust your light looking. <laughs> but just you and light in a room in a class. And let's start with our first lesson. So in the classroom called light, lesson one today will be about rising above challenges. Think about a time where everything seems dark and gloomy, so it's not very nice. But you found the strength to somehow to rise above it. So my story on this particular lesson kind of is, is I can laugh about it now, but it wasn't very funny when it was happening. So I was born into a middle class family so my life was very much planned out from very early on. And then suddenly, our status changed. And it was like, yeah, I can only say we went from being what we would call haves to the have-nots in a very short time. And there was no safety net, and we just, it was a huge shock. And so it was a lot of things. Well, not just about not having the same amount of um, assets or money in the bank as we had before, but it was always also about the fact that I had been groomed and trained for a life that we no longer had. So that was really difficult. But what I found out was that even though our circumstances changed, the way I thought, the lessons I had, the exposure I'd been given was still mine because it was still in my mind. And so my imagination was not affected, thank goodness. But what happened was that um, my mind became my safe space. So when my environment changed and I couldn't recognize where we were because it didn't look as nice as it was before, <laughs> I escaped into my mind a lot. And so I became really good at drawing pictures and focusing on pictures in my mind instead, because there were pictures of places I'd rather be than where I actually was. It didn't seem like much, but then it was this visualization that helped me many years down the line, because obviously at this point, any hopes of a private education were up in smoke, right? And if I wanted to have that level of education at any point in my life, I was gonna have to make an alternate plan. And what that meant was I had to find a scholarship. So I started looking for a scholarship, but I started four years before I needed it. And to be honest, now that I think about it, it was quite mad. <laughs> because imagine going to search online, because I didn't own a computer, right? So I had to go to what we call cyber cafes. And I couldn't afford to pay hourly. So I would go overnight. And so what that meant was after my classes and lectures, I would go take a quick nap, and then I would go to the cyber cafe overnight so that I could browse for as many scholarships as I could in that time frame, and then get a quick nap in the morning again and go back to class. This was all nice, but I wasn't graduating in the next four years, so people thought I was quite mad. But it was my picture in my mind, and the fact that it was so clear. And I was really ruthless about keeping it, because to me, it was my prized possession. The only thing that our circumstances hadn't touched, so I was very, I was very protective of it. I was like, don't come near my mind. Um, and what I found was that that vision kept me going for four straight years. I had that routine every other day without fail. And when I did get the scholarship, the, the picture of my school, of the environment, of everything was just as I imagined. So that was amazing for me. And that was the first lesson. So challenges are our great teachers, the greatest actually. They show you what you're made of and how strong you are. Because if you had asked me when I was being shuffled driven everywhere, if I was going to do this amazing thing and find this scholarship and be like fully funded for my master's abroad, and I'd be like, no, they're going to pay for it, so why do I have to suffer? But there we are. So the next question is about exploring new paths. And you would think this comes with the territory, but with the changes, like I said, um, a lot of things had to change. Most of most of my most impactful lessons have come from my education, as you see from the examples I'm giving. Um, but for me, I am usually terrified when I don't, I don't like not knowing very much. I like knowing like five or 10 steps ahead, maybe five, or no, actually more like 20, but I'm being modest. Um, so so this, this actually scares me, not yeah. knowing. And I remember when I got in, admission to university in, in Nigeria, and um, my first choice didn't work out, so we had to choose a different university in a different part of the country that I'd never been to before. And my mom was working around in panic because she was like, Nina, where is that? And we brought out the map and we're like, okay, it's close to the capital. I have a friend who lives in the capital. And she calls up her childhood friend and she says, oh, I know loads of people that are in that school. It's a really good school. It's a technical school. Um, it's not very popular because they're all about academics, so people don't care much about them. But it's really good if she's going into the sciences. And my mom is like, okay, my friend says it's good. So we can try. But even at that, we were both scared. But what I found was being so far away from home for the first time, I've been far, but not that far. It, it actually was one of the most impactful experiences of my life because it opened my eyes, not just academically, of course, 
but culturally. So I could actually introduce myself afterwards. I say, oh, hello, I'm a Kugo. I'm from the east of Nigeria. I was born in the west of Nigeria. And now I'm studying in the north of Nigeria. You know, like it's such a good icebreaker, like really balanced citizen. But I found out much later that this experience was actually quite rare, even within the country. Like there are people that have never gone past their hometown in their entire lives. And so I was like, oh, wow, this is like, this is huge. And it actually helped me um, create that experience and be grateful for it and grateful for the fact that I could go that far, make new friends, make new connections with a culture I had no knowledge about or no exposure to prior. Um, and that's one of the most, one of the experiences I'm most grateful for actually because it's, it's shaped the way I relate with people, even in my, my career. I don't see try, I can't because it just doesn't work through my mind's eye because I've met all the cultures and I grew up in all the cultures. So trying to tell me one was better than the other was just, it didn't, it didn't pass through my filter, right? So that has helped me a lot. And what I've learned from this is that for everything you think you know, there's so much more that you don't. And life will sometimes force you to embrace these adventures. And the whole point is for you to step out of your comfort zone and learn something new about this silly beautiful world that we're in. Which brings me to my next lesson, which is finding meaning in all of this and stepping into your purpose. So this is the moment where all these experiences, which at the time seemed very, very random, I have to explain. Sounds really nice now, but when it was happening, my life. Like, you have to understand, this, is, this was a well-ordered, we had a plan. <laughs> and then now, I'm being like tossed here and there, and I'm thinking, <laughs> what does this mean? Um, but then everything suddenly made sense, and I started to connect the dots. Um, and it's, it's not really like everything, you see the full picture still, but you sort of start realizing why things are the way they are, and why you've learned the things you've learned, right? So, um, first of all, let me go way, way, way back. I grew up with, in a, a family where like extended family was very important. So my mom and her siblings were always finding excuses to come together and eat. Like, oh, someone just got a promotion. Oh, it's, uh, we're meeting over here. And in the next two days, oh, it's, it's her child's baby dedication. And, Whoa, okay. But what was actually happening was that that community was their safe space. And so they always found ways to bond and they were intentional about us and their children bonding alongside them. Now, this also meant that a lot of the people I hung out with as a, as a young child were much older than me. And in our culture, when you're a child, you listen to adults. Mm. Listen, you don't interrupt. <laughs> so I learned how to listen very early and just be a fly on the wall and just observe. And I observed my then aunties and mom who were at the height of their career, much like my age now, you know, talking about all oh, kids going to school and things like that. And I found that I, thinking back now, I actually had the privilege of seeing people live out their lives and seeing how their choices affected the way their lives turned out. And for some of them who were gracious enough, they were usually very honest with me. I can't imagine why, but maybe because I was a precocious child and I used to ask really deep questions. <laughs> but, but they would come back to me and say things like, oh, I regret this. I should have focused more on this. And that to me is a privilege as well that many people don't get to have. Um, and mind you, I built this, this group of women, right? To me, they were just my aunties, but they were like, they survived the war. They represented the country in the most prestigious sporting events, all three of them. They built careers, they raised families of their own, but still they were at their best and they were sharing jokes, laughing, poking fun at each other for silly things they did like 30 years before. It just shows me that I needed to see that. First of all, because we need, I needed to learn that you could do great things from a small place. It doesn't have, you don't have to come from a particular status or family or point in the map to contribute to something really important. You also need to remember what matters. Relationships matter, family matters. So after you've achieved everything, you've gotten all these fancy stuff and you've got some big titles and you have medals hanging in your room. It's really about the things that matter at the end of the day. And honestly, I was like, okay, so now I understand. It's like, for me, all these things I've experienced, I've found that what's common is that I know how to find pathways to different things. Right? So I'm a bit of a wayfinder. So I go through this bush and it's really big and you're like, say for example, you don't have money and you want to go to school abroad and you want to get a scholarship. That was a bush, that was an unknown. I just, there was nobody I could ask questions, there was nobody to teach me how to do this, I had to figure it out myself. And once I did, oh my goodness, I was the worst friend to have, because I was asking my friend, how many scholarships have you applied for? Have you applied for this? Don't be lazy, go to the office, pick the application form, I will proofread it, you must fill it, you must go. And in all of this, I, just, I have to say, that a few people have come to me and it's like, oh, I got this because you, you talked about it so much and how did it so much. And another one was like, oh, I got this scholarship. I physically forced someone to fill to fill out a form. Now that I think about it, they must have been thinking, you're mad. But I was like, I found something and you guys need to try it. So that was a light bulb moment for me on 
stepping into my purpose. This was much about the destination because by the time I got the scholarship, I wasn't really interested in the degree anymore. I was just so excited that I had gotten it. So I was like, oh my God, I actually got this. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> and then lesson four is about seeing things differently. I, I mean, I've alluded to this in lesson one, right? It's like not having as much as we did before means you actually see people. When you're not sure how driven everywhere, you need to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't walk or take public transportation. So it's, it's a different life. And it was like two different worlds, I promise you, that it was an eye-opener. I never would have described the world the way I saw it when I was on my feet and in public transportation. It was, yeah, very different. I didn't expect it. Another thing I didn't expect from the change of circumstance was that a lot of starters came with a lot of agency. So when, when my mom wasn't in this you know, high-flying position anymore, it just went very quiet. Like. You know, we didn't have people coming in to say, oh, yes, ma'am, we were just passing through. Um, we thought you say hello. And, oh, the children are so lovely. It was really quiet. And it just got taught me that, you know, a lot of startups is painful, but you, you see what really bites is a lot of agency where your opinion is no longer valid. That's really, really painful. And what that meant was that I got to relate more with people who, for one reason or the other, just didn't have or, you know, they had done everything right, but they just fell on hard times. And what you find is that people will be considered to be poor, maybe poor, but they aren't stupid. Like, the, the fact that you don't have enough money in your account doesn't put a lid on your aspirations. And most times, the society wants us to believe that those two somehow go together all the time. So the poor people, they're poor because they're illiterate. No, not really. Um, and so what that taught me was, I was more empathetic, I was more patient, I, I listened more. I, I wanted to know more about people and their own particular experiences. Um, and whenever I meet anyone, I'm just like, I'm addressing you as a human being. Because my mother's experience had taught me that titles mean nothing. Because you have no idea when they'll be taken away. So all you have is you, your essence, and what you bring to the world. And that's how I relate with somebody. The entirety doesn't mean anything. You can work hard for them, I appreciate them. I mean, I have a career. I, I understand their place in society, but they don't mean anything to me. <laughs> um, and so this brings me to the last um, lesson, which is sharing my story. And as I stand here today, I realize an absolute, like, just the, the guts I have is actually needed. Because this is me coming back to school after you know, about 20 years after I graduated from my undergrad. Um, I had a first master's maybe after school, and then I built a career, I got married, had three boisterous children, one of whom needs extra care. And I just, the audacity that I had to think that I could go through all this and still come back and do an MA and compete with this 20, well, not say agent, but, but like, <laughs> 20 to 30 year olds who are super smart and, and are bringing all these crazy ideas and tech savvy and thinking that I would have something positive and super special to contribute, I must have been mad. But then again, I am here and I'm sharing here at TEDx, University of Sussex, so, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, 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 I, what I think is, you know, Sharing the experience is just as important as experiencing it itself. Because, you know, like sometimes even in class when we speak about development, or using all these development speak, like big words, vulnerability, generals, livelihood, community, <laughs> bottom of intervention, the will to improve. I love them as concepts, but to a large extent, I understand them through my experiences. And that brings a depth to education and a depth to my experience here at Sussex that is, in fact, it's, it's difficult to put into words. And no one can, can quite um, share your perspective with the world like you can. So it's your story, you lived it. So it's important, it's almost like an auction. Like once you've stepped in your into your proposal, you begin to start it or you feel like you're beginning to understand, it's your responsibility to find the right platforms to share. Because what's happening is that you're going through that because there's someone else in the world that needs that piece of the puzzle that you figured out to place into their own puzzle so they can figure theirs out and so they can move on to the next level. So it's so important. Sometimes the greatest gift you can give is your story. Um, in your circles of influence, your family, friends, community, TEDx. <laughs> Um, and by sharing these experiences, you can help each other navigate the ups and downs. And as I wrap up, I want to remind you that there is no experience that's too small or too meaningless. They all, they all teach us something. Um, and it's not really about the event or the goal, it's about the process of who you're becoming while this is happening. So embrace it, I encourage you, embrace your own journey through life lessons. Take risks, learn from your mistakes. Because if you don't take the risks, life is going to throw them at you anyway. So, like, just, yeah. And never stop seeking the lessons that life has to offer because it will all make sense in the end, as long as you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life that you had imagined. It's so important. So you need to move, but you need to move in the direction of what's here. So if there's nothing here, then just move it. 
So both of them need to, to happen and work at the same time. Do what you need to do to develop yourself. Take courses, join a mastermind, find a coach. I've done all of that. So I sound really cool, but I've got a lot of help to get here, right? So do what you need to do to improve yourself, to bring your story, to understand your journey. It's well worth it because someone needs what you have learned in life. Um, I think it's a prayer. May your life filled with strength, discovery, and purpose as you continue to learn and grow through life lessons. Thank you very much.